Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ron W7DOA, Whiskey 7 Delta Oscar Alpha with 406 AM Radio. A few weeks ago, I put out a reel on YouTube saying that I was going to the post office to pick up a brand new radio that I was excited to get. I've spent some time with that radio now and uh, want to put out a quick little video about it. As you can tell by the title of the video, we are talking about the BTEC UV Pro. Um, and this has the potential to be an awesome little radio. Uh, one of the things, one of the reasons why I bought it is that um, it's a dual band radio. Um, it has audio Bluetooth in it. Um, so I can pair a ton of things to it. My phone, um, it comes with its own app that runs on your phone, which we'll get into in just a minute. I can uh, pair a Bluetooth headset to it, something like a pair of earbuds like this, um, a pair of ear, uh, earbuds, whatever they're called, AirPods. Um, I can even pair my motorcycle Bluetooth comm system to it. Um, and so the setup that I was going to do was pairing the radio with my phone and then there's a setting in there where you can forward the audio through the phone um, onto a set of, you know, a Bluetooth headset like in my helmet. So I would be able to hear the radio comms in my helmet. And the advantage to pairing my helmet to my phone, not directly to the radio, is that um, I could then still do things on my phone like send and receive phone calls, um, listen to music, all of the stuff that you would normally do with your helmet headset, um, but still have radio traffic in it as well. Um, it comes with an app. It does APRS. And it, one of the things that really excited me was that it did full-blown APRS. Um, so not just a tracking APRS. I could send and receive messages, which means I could send messages to other uh, ham users through APRS. I could use services like SMS or WeatherBot or MPAD, a um, ton of services out there. Um, I don't really do the whole email thing. I had WinLink set up with email for a while. Um, I just found I didn't use it. And so I, I don't use that anymore. And so this was just a great little all-in-one radio. I watched all the videos and, and uh, I, I thought that this was the one. Um, I'll spare you all the details of all the great features this radio has. There's 101 videos out on YouTube that you can go see all the praises in the world about this radio. So let's talk about some things that you really probably need to know about before you buy this radio. Um, three things, two of them are fairly minor, um, and then a great big one, and we'll talk about that one last. Um, the first thing is I found the programming uh, of this radio through the app on your phone uh, challenging at best. And uh, I may do a future video on how to do that correctly. Um, I was having problems with channels and groups and stuff being overwritten. And I think I've sorted out that problem. Um, it's just not how I expected it to operate. And so uh, a little challenging. We'll just put it that way. Um, the second problem that I have uh, with this radio is it seems a little deaf. Now, I will caveat that with saying that I do not have lab uh, great equipment. I don't have all of that stuff. This is real world experience. When comparing it with other radios in its weight class, uh, if it's sitting on the bench with me uh, next to a Radtel, um, a TID radio, TDH3, um, I think I have some Quenchong, some other Baofeng radios, when they're all sitting there, those radios will receive will receive radio transmissions that this will not. Um, so out in the real world, real world mud and dirt, um, this thing won't pick up what other radios will. And I understand the whole thing about antennas and squelch levels and all of that. I get all that, which is why you see this thing has a signal stick antenna on it to get it the best that I can. So those are the two minor-ish things. I mean, the receive on it is pretty big, but it's adequate enough that I could make it work for most things. Um, 
just keep in mind that I was not comparing this against, uh, you know, a $3,000 Motorola or an $8,000 Harris or anything like this. We were comparing it against radios in its own weight class. So let's talk about APRS for just a little bit. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can run APRS on this radio. You could just use it as a tracking only thing and it works great for that. Um, I, I don't seem to have any problems. The GPS seems to be fairly accurate um, and uh, it just works great if you're just tracking with it. The problem that I have comes when you start sending messages. Um, so let's talk just a little bit about a message and how it's sent over the APRS network. Um, there's not really like a computer kind of network acknowledgement packet kind of thing going on uh, in APRS. It's more of a broadcast and if you hear it, you hear it and you don't, you don't. Um, and so how they have handled that in APRS is when you send a message, it has four or five retries on it. Um, and so let's say I send a message to uh, WeatherBot. I send the message out to WeatherBot and WeatherBot sends me an acknowledgement packet back that says, hey, I got that. And that acknowledgement packet tells my radio that WeatherBot got it, stop sending the packet because they received it. Um, and then WeatherBot gathers the information for what I want. And then it sends me a message back with all of that radio or all of that weather information in it that I want. My radio receives that, the app, and then the radio transfers it onto the app. I see it, everything's fine. This is where the problem comes in. The radio, my radio, then sends an acknowledgement packet or an ACK packet back to WeatherBot that says, got it, stop sending it. Only this radio doesn't send it back on the APRS channel consistently. I'll just put it that way. What it seems to be doing in the radio settings, there is a, uh, a digital channel that you assign as the digital APRS channel. So I set it as channel 30. It's at the bottom of the channel list. It's out of my way. I don't have to worry about it. The radio constantly monitors that channel for digital traffic coming in, and it does a really good job at that. But also on the screen of the radio, now there are uh, one or two voice channels, depending on whether you're running two channels or one on your screen. Um, but the channel that is selected as the current monitor channel seems to be the channel that this radio sends the APRS acknowledgement packet back on. This creates some problems. So let's just say <clears throat> that I'm monitoring and listening to 146520, the national two meter calling frequency. I receive a message on my radio, the, uh, an APRS message, a text message, and my radio receives, sends an ACK message back on the national calling frequency. That means everybody on the national calling frequency has to listen to this buzz that nobody wants to listen to. The second problem that happens with that is whoever is sending to me that message, whether it's another user or weather bot or whatever, they have four or five retries. And because they didn't get an acknowledgement packet back, they didn't get in an act packet back, it went out on the national calling frequency. In a few seconds, 15, 20 seconds, it will send that message again. My radio will then again send the acknowledgement message back out on the national calling frequency. So for every message that comes into my radio, whatever channel I'm monitoring has to listen to this uh, nasty digital sound back, which causes a lot of problems, as you might imagine. Um, everybody in my immediate listening area has to listen to that. A, or, even worse, if I'm on a repeater or if I'm on a linked repeater, that becomes quite a big problem. That digital message, digital noise goes out over a, quite a large area. And the other bigger problem is, is uh, I am part of a local search and rescue team, so I do monitor a lot of the local uh, emergency services channels. If that happened to happen, if that were to happen while I was monitoring one of those emergency services channels, now that dig that digital message is going out 
on an emergency services frequency. That can cause a lot of problems and not only does it cause problems, it can be illegal. Um, so me and another gentleman are working on this. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure he wants me to put his name out on YouTube. So we'll skip that part. Uh, we have been emailing BTEC back and forth about this particular issue. Um, and, uh, I'm not sure if they're quite understanding it or if the development team is maybe a little bit slower than I would like to see them be. Um, those are the uh, the ugly parts of this radio that I've found so far. Like I said, there are 101 videos out there on YouTube that you can go watch that sing this radio praises and it does an amazing thing. And it has the potential to be an absolutely amazing radio. Um, right now I'm a little bit scared of this radio and it is a little bit daunting in trying to work through these problems. Um, I'll, do, I'll update you as I go along. Um, if we get some of these figured out, the, uh, date on this video is around January 8th, 2025. And so as of the date of this recording, those are some of the problems. Um, we've gotten, uh, I mean, we are working closely enough with BTEC that we're, we have the latest and greatest app and firmware that we could possibly get from them. Um, and uh, the problem seems to be there. Um, the good news is, is they are working on it. Um, they are aware of the problem and we will continue to work on it. Um, just not quite where I want it to be right at this moment. One more quick thing as I was going to post with this, I just wanted to mention, didn't want it, uh, I didn't want to make it sound like I was a, a lead tester or any sort of tester at all for BTEC. I am just a user. I bought the radio with my own cash and uh, just sending some bugs or undocumented features back to BTEC. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that. I'm not a tester for them. Um, just a user out there like you uh, sending some feedback for them. There you have it. There's the down and dirty on this little radio. Um, I want to love this radio so bad. Um, but I'll be honest with you, $160 is a lot of money for uh, a brand new boat anchor. And especially when this radio is not heavy enough to even be an anchor for my kayak. Um, it's a lot of money. And so I'm a little frustrated with it at this moment. Um, I'll update you as it goes along and hopefully good news will be coming out shortly. Um, that's where we're at. Thanks for watching. Um, like uh, always in every YouTube video you ever see, there's the begging for the like and the subscribe and the bell icon and all that down below. Um, leave a message down below if you have experienced this problem or if you have found a workaround for this problem. Um, let me know because like I said, I want to love this radio so bad. Thanks. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. This is Ron W7DOA73.